I think one of my earliest memories is actually of sound. If I can go right back to when dinosaurs were still roaming the earth when I was about four or so, I was fascinated with the stereo in the living room. It was this big silver thing built into this huge wooden cabinet and the sound was just, to me, just was just like, wow, you know. And growing up in the 70s, even though I was still quite small, I, I can remember a lot of the music that was coming out, in the, particularly in the late 70s. So my earliest musical memories were lots of classical, whatever was playing on the radio, so a lot of sort of late 70s, so there was, was disco, so there was ABBA, and Jeff Wayne's War of the Worlds had just been released. So that was a constant source of terror and delight at the same time. I couldn't stop listening to that. It drove my family mad. Shortly after that, I got into Iseo Tomita, a synthesizer pioneer from Japan. There were always keyboards around as well, and I was fascinated with them too. I think it was just anything to do with technology and sound. There's a big clue there as to how my life was going to pan out. Yeah, anything to do with technology and sound was just, it was an instant draw for me. So we had these keyboards knocking around in the house and I would try and play them and I just felt absolutely like I wanted to play them. And I was fascinated with how they worked and what they did. And I was pressing buttons and trying different things out. Not much has changed, really. When I was about nine, I was asked if I would like to learn my notes. That was the actual question asked to me. Said, how would you like to learn your notes? And I thought they meant like note taking or something. I was like, what? Turned out they meant piano. And given that I was really rubbish at sport and I wasn't particularly academic really I thought well what have I got to lose so I started learning the piano and after about three or four months I was well into it and I just found my thing and that was that soon after that was a massive uh, musical voyage of discovery in terms of listening to stuff being at school this is way before the internet. There was no internet. I remember a time before the internet. I'm probably one of the oldest people on the team, by the way. I should mention that I am 46. So, <laughs> this is all probably sounding really strange. Like, what's he going on about? Stereos? What? Tapes? Hello? When I was at school in the early 80s, in particular, well, coming into our teenage years, music was a very important thing. So, as it is with any teenager anyway, it doesn't matter what generation you are. And so, you know, tapes would start circulating amongst friends. Have you listened to this? You need to check this out. Oh, you, you like that, so you might like this. So I discovered loads of stuff, and I, I got into uh, Jean-Michel Jarre, Vangelis, Tangerine Dream, lots of progressive rock and, and everything in between, really, and, 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 you know, pop music and stuff. But I, I've got a pretty diverse range of tastes, so and I like to absorb as many different musical sources as possible, really. And then after about sort of the age of 13, started writing my own music, so. And I think living where I do, and everything that you're seeing now is footage from my local area. This is where I live. I live amongst all of this. So it's pretty hard not to be inspired by this you know, landscape, as you can see. As you can see from the footage, um, where I live, I mean, it dates back thousands of years and, and you know there's evidence of forts and settlements dotted around the area that you can still kind of see where they were and walk around them and you really get this kind of real sense of history and uh, you know, you're walking probably in places where your ancestors walked you know and it, that's really exciting to me there's so much history here and a lot of the landscape reminded me of Skyrim as well, actually. So it wasn't difficult to get inspired and it wasn't difficult to get ideas. I got introduced to Skyrim. I think about a year after it was released, I had heard of it. I was aware that it was a video game. I hadn't played video games in years. I was a massive video game addict in my earlier years. And then I kind of went off it and just focused mostly on music. And then uh, someone introduced me to the game, showed me the game. And I was blown away, having not seen video games for years and all my memories of playing 
my you know, video games on like the ZX81 on the Commodore 64 and and then the original Xbox was my last console that I ever owned when I was in my late 20s early 30s I was absolutely blown away and I was immediately struck by not only the visuals and how gorgeous the game looked and this was even before the remastered edition um it was the music I, I, the first, one of the first things that popped into my head as I was watching the gameplay, I was like, wow, the score's great. And it was instantly captivating and memorable. It had themes. It wasn't a, just a generic score. Do you know what I mean? It, it had heart and there was this kind of... Um, you could feel the history and lore of this land kind of oozing out of the music so I was just like wow this is awesome and I got addicted to Skyrim as as most of us did and it was my safe haven it was my harbor uh, where I could escape to from from everyday life and um, particularly a lot of um, horrible stuff that had went on in, in my life and some really dark times and Skyrim was uh, my go-to, was my getaway. So I owe that game a lot, actually. And then years went by and I started hearing through the grapevine that there were these people who were developing mods and extending the game, extending the lands and, and, the, and the regions and the provinces. And I was like, all right. And um, then I heard about Bruma. I watched the footage and was just like, wow, this is awesome. And then at the end of the video, it said, if you want to be part of our team, get in touch. And I thought, well, I wonder if they need any help with music. You know, they're, they're, I wonder how many people are contributing original music to these things. There's got to be a need for it. There has to be, you know, you can't have one without the other. You know, I think music is 50% of a game. It's 50% it's of a film, you know. I thought, well, what have I got to lose? I'll just... So I wrote a demo. Um, I think I did it in an afternoon. And I sent it off. And within like 24 hours, I got a message back. Um, really like the demo. We'd like to talk to you a bit more. So I was really excited about this. And, um, and here I am. And I joined, I think it was around about July in uh, 2018. So we're nearly up to a year. And uh, my part is, is pretty much done now. It's just been amazing. For a game that helped me and provided me with so much solace and reassurance, I felt that I needed to, in some way, give something back. Whatever role that I play in all of this in the realm of Beyond Skyrim, my small part will maybe uh, provide somebody else with some comfort and solace or just enjoyment you know um, I think that's 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 the reward for me and which outweighs any kind of you know financial gain and it's been amazing I mean I, I it's kind of a surreal thing really because this is the first video game project that I've worked on and the only other thing I did before that was a TV commercial for Scale Electric um, and that's been my experience so far so that's it other than that, I had um, released previous solo albums, been with a couple of record labels. I am just kind of happy kind of going about my life and just writing music as and when I get inspired. And um, just being sort of generally happy with my lot. The way I went about it a lot of the time, I tend to compose when I'm playing and writing I tend to do it with my eyes shut because I can see the landscape that I'm trying to kind of portray sonically and I find it difficult to do that when you're just looking at wood and plastic you know in a studio it's it's difficult to kind of draw anything from that but your imagination you know is a bottomless pool of resource you know you know so shut your eyes and just go with it and the creative process with the score, for me, wasn't difficult. It really wasn't. I was very excited, obviously, to be part of the team. It's been an amazing experience. But 
um, to actually just kind of pretty much have full scope and do and for me to do something quite different from what I've done before, which is more sort of like instrumental, progressive, new age, synth kind of based stuff to a more cinematic orchestral approach and being classically trained on piano, this felt like a much more of a natural environment to be in musically. So, so yeah, so just I just shut my eyes and just went off into my own little world, which is kind of how it is when you're playing video games. So that's how I did it, really. There's no great sort of mystery. I didn't overthink anything. I just kind of let my muse flow through me. <laughs> and, uh, and everything else sort of took care of itself, really. If you're struggling when you're right, it's not going to happen. And it's going to sound like you struggled. It's gonna, that's how it's going to come across. That's the way I always think, you know. I heard a great quote once saying that, you know, your, your music will sound like the time you had making it. And I think that's very true. So it was very important for me to um, enjoy myself, which wasn't difficult, um, whilst I was writing and, and, and putting it all together and just coming up with the ideas. And it was just a joy to work on. So I'm really, really glad that I got the opportunity to do it. It's been amazing to work with the other guys on the team. It was good for me to feel that I needed to raise my game and get out of my comfort zone a bit because, you know, you're dealing with a lot of high-end talent so you know and you've got to kind of keep up with everybody else and the, the the quality that everyone's striving for no one's getting paid for this you know but we're doing it out of a, a labor of love you know it's a passion you know it's just been an amazing experience and i've thoroughly enjoyed myself kind of sad that it's pretty much over for me now you know what i mean my, my bid is done but it's been a privilege really to be a part of this fantastic monumental achievement to do the whole of, of Tamriel is going to be amazing to see and play. My God, you know, how many lifetimes is it going to take to explore this place? It's, it's unbelievable. It's just about the music, really, for me. What I do get, what I am rich in, is, is the reward of having something complete, like a project, and then how it um, enhances other people's lives. And I think for me, that's enough. <laughs>